Welcome back friends and family of Crawlers and Customs. I'm James and today on the bench we have the highly anticipated super scale lifted truck. So this truck is pretty unique that it's running a super scale 2020 and our 40 millimeter lift kit controlling four servos and adjusting and reacting to the terrain as it encounters it. It makes the truck look much heavier. If you don't know what that looks like, check out some other videos and you'll see it in action. A really fun uh, add on to this is uh, taking pin number seven, running it to your receiver, and controlling ride height live. So this is going to lift the truck about 40 or 50 millimeters, but your total range might be 30 to 80 millimeters. I'm just going to manually move the servos, but the truck can come way down or go way up or anywhere in between. Uh, it's designed to work best at that middle or sort of parallel arm setup for the servos. And to run this setup, you're going to need first our standard 40 millimeter lift kit, which you can find in the Etsy store in the link below. Um, if your kit has a front servo bracket that looks like this, but does not have these holes in it, please shoot me a message before you buy the kit. I changed this a few months ago, anticipating this upgrade, but not all kits have this. So if you don't have the two holes in your steering servo bracket, please message me so I can drop a new one in the mail uh, along with the uh, add-on kit. So let's go over what you're going to need to do. You need to buy four 35 kilogram servos. You need to buy a super scale. You need to buy a castle BEC. And you may also want to buy these offset arms. We're going to go over that in just a minute. So the add-on kit is going to be a super scale bracket. So you're going to bolt it into your frame and put the super scale on top. And it's going to be these sort of funny shaped brackets front and rear. These are designed with a couple of holes for the servo wires. Make sure when you're installing them that the holes are towards the center of the truck. Uh, the other way to read is look at our logo and make sure that's readable from the middle of the truck. So you would have that set up. And then to build this bracket in the rear, you're going to get a new cross member. It's going to key in like this. And you're going to get this little spacer. So you're going to build it. You're going to end up with something that looks like that with the logo again readable from the center of the truck this piece assembled in the front looks like this i'm just going to take it apart so you can see what's going on but there are two servos sitting back to back these are standard 35 kilogram servos kind of the ebay specials uh, again the spacer is going to go towards the outside of the truck you know towards the extreme front or extreme rear your steering servo bracket it's going to mount here, and we're going to take a couple of long screws and bolt this bracket together. Um, at that point, you're going to take these smaller brackets, and you can see them on the truck here under the body mounts, but these mount right here on the side. So you're going to get a couple of bolts that come with the kit, and you're going to screw them in. And that's basically ready to drop onto the truck with your servos. At this point, you're gonna have a truck that sits kind of like this one. You're gonna to wanna to follow Super Scale's setup, but you'll notice that I have mine sort of transversely mounted. That's important. There's a setting that goes longitudinal or transverse to so make sure you run it transverse. And I believe, well, I don't remember, I believe that I had to use the front servos reversed firmware. Again, when you buy this, he'll send you an email and there are a couple different firmwares that you can run. Um, let's talk about the rear of the truck. So if you noticed, these servos are pretty much butted up against each other. That means that this distance between the two servo arms is as tight as you can get without going to micro servos and adding more expense. So I wanted to keep this relatively cost effective. So on the left side of the truck, you're going to see the standard servo arm that comes with the truck. I'm sorry, that comes with the servos. I'm sure you guys have seen these. They look like this. The only problem with that is it offsets the top of the shock outboard. Now, it's not a big deal for a lot of people, but it is a big deal to me. Um, I don't like that look because what it ended up doing was sort of tilting the tops of the shocks out on both sides. Couldn't really tell from the side, but if you look from the back, the two shocks sort of look like this, and I want them to be more parallel. So if you want that, what you're going to need to do is buy a TRX-4 uh, aftermarket servo horn. And you'll notice that these are offset by quite a bit, maybe five millimeters or more. 
something like that. And you're gonna see on the left, I'm sorry, on the right side of the truck, I've got one of those installed and it keeps the shock uh, in a vertical plane. So if you want the shocks to be vertical, um, then you're gonna to need to buy a pair of these at least. You can also run it up front and end up putting more uh, M3 nuts behind your shocks to bring them out to parallel kit because again, it'll drive them inboard. With the stock servo arms, they're actually parallel. So if you were to buy four of these, you end up offsetting the shocks and now the tops would sort of be tilted in. So it's up to you. Um, I left it in uh, sort of halfway done so you could see the difference. Uh, it's minor, but again, um, I'm sort of a perfectionist when it comes to the look of the truck and I just didn't like the way the shocks sat. So I'm going to finish this truck by installing uh, the rest of these offset servo horns to drive the uh, king shocks back in. Also, you cannot run your stock shocks with this setup. It is designed to run longer than stock by a pretty good margin. So I'm gonna tilt the truck over so we can take a look. But if you'll notice, we've got our 40 millimeter lift kit and our stock shocks would normally mount to the frame that is um, 40 millimeters below where they would normally sit. You can see that the stock shock hoop, shock hoop is completely gone. So in this case, you're gonna to wanna to run shocks that are maybe 110, 120, 130 millimeters long. These happen to be 120 millimeter king shocks, um, but you can mix and match and sort of customize depending on how high you want your truck to sit. Now it's important to consider that if you were to put really long shocks on this and you have adjustable suspension, you'll see how extreme these, these drive line angles can be. So um, I've designed it to sit at 40 millimeters right here with the arms sort of parallel to the ground. And that gives a uh, really good fidelity for the servos to react to the terrain. Um, you know, if you had it all the way lifted up and these servos are moving, you can see they're not gonna do much work. But if they're right here, they have a lot more control of the axle. Uh, these are some custom uh, HTEC wheels. I'll put a link in the description. Also, if you guys dig those, he's really responsive to requests and I wanted some blue uh, rims on black to match the blue F450 body. Um, also, you will only run a rear anti-sway, no front anti-sway on this setup. Doesn't work that well with the super scale. Um, so that's about it. Um, this truck is running 1.9s on some uh, Super Swamper um, TSL tires or scale tires. You can see there's good clearance between the inside of the tire and the sway bar. So if you have any questions, please shoot me a message, but uh, I'm gonna have this optional add-on in the Etsy store in the next few days. And for those of you that already have the lift kit, again, I really appreciate your business. It's what keeps me going in this hobby. Uh, you guys can grab the optional add-on and then eventually what I'm going to do is have an all-in kit where the lift kit and add-on is available as a, as a single piece. But right now to give everybody uh, who's already bought my kit uh, first dibs, it will only be an optional add-on. So again, this is only going to work if you have our 40 millimeter lift kit already and then buy these separately. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a good night. Lastly, um, you will be trimming your body post front and rear. You can see this is quite a bit shorter than the stock post. Uh, and you can see how the pins are located there. So it's your rear setup for stock body height relative to the chassis. And there is the front. So you can see the lower pin inside of this bracket. Also got a little under bumper light on this truck. So there's our lift kit, the brackets, and the setup with King shocks and H-Tech wheels. Here's a look from the side of the truck at standard ride height. And we're gonna go ahead and control it with our transmitter. That is maybe 70 or 80 millimeters over stock ride height. And we can also bring the truck down uh, to about 20 or 30 millimeters over stock ride height. It's kind of a cool look with the body on and really wide tires. Uh, again, it's designed to sit at this middle height I'm controlling it from the transmitter and a quick demonstration at the end of the video here so you guys can see just what's happening with the super scale. So you can see it controlling the top of the shock and 
it's reacting to the chassis moving relative to the ground. So all of those functions, the range, the balance, the speed, the sort of weight, that's all adjustable here on the super scale and follow his instructions for that setup. All right, so that's a super scale 2020 on a F450.